hope it leaves you changed. I hope it makes you begin to think about what's coming. If you have a Bible, turn to Revelation 9. And uh, verse 1, and then jump on down to verse number 11. Father, I pray, Lord, for the gift of teaching this morning now, and I pray, Father, for the presence of the Holy Spirit. You said you'd guide us into all truth. Father, we need that now, Lord. Uh, you fully know that this is not what it was 50 years ago. We're on the edge. And I pray that you'd help us today and guide us, give us wisdom. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Revelation 9, verse 1. The fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven under the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Now, I'm going to ask you a question before we go any further. Where is that pit? Where does it say it is in the Bible? Hell, but where is it? Where is it located? In the earth. All right, it's in the earth. It's in the earth that you're standing on right now. All right, now look at verse number 11. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. Now this is the angel over the bottomless pit. Now when Judas Iscariot was so named of our Lord Jesus Christ as the son of perdition, that, that identified him with the spirit that came up out of the bottomless pit. But here's what's important to understand. Revelation 9 is literally talking about opening the gate of hell. Now when does this happen? This happens in the tribulation period, I believe. You're going to find a lot of controversy to that because you believe there's a lot of people who believe that the church is going to go into the tribulation. Some believe the church will be raptured midway through the tribulation. And then some believe the church will go all the way through the seven years of the tribulation. I do not believe that. I believe that we are not appointed to wrath, but to obtain salvation. 1 Thessalonians 5. The wrath that he's talking about there is not hell. It's the wrath of God. The great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? It is pouring out of the wrath of God upon the earth. So I believe the church of God, and the church of God, let me say this this morning, is made up of those who look for his appearing. It's not the people who have their names on church rolls. That is irrelevant. That doesn't mean a thing. It is the ones who are born again, who belong to the body of Christ. And the Holy Spirit should be awakening people now as we approach this time. He should be awakening people. I hope before you leave out of here this morning, you'll be awakened if, you're not, if you already aren't. This is the devil. This is Satan coming up in Revelation chapter number 9. The spirit of Satan coming up to incarnate himself into a man. Revelation chapter number 13 talks about that man who's the beast that rises up out of the sea. Then in Revelation chapter number 13, it talks about a false prophet who comes up out of the earth. And that's a future study for us to deal with that in here, to talk about the things that literally come up out of the earth. Now, the normal take on that is that it's a simply a, uh, a, a simple, it's a way of saying, well, they, they come from mankind. They originate from what's on the surface of the earth. But when you begin to look at it and get a little deeper into it, it begins to appear to me like it's not so much the people walking around on the surface of the earth as it is things coming up out of the earth itself. This earth that you're sitting on right now has a lot of stuff underneath us. So in Revelation chapter number 9, it talks about the beast, that, the, uh, the, the spirit of bad Napoleon that comes up out of the earth, out of the bottomless pit. Now, uh, notice the word Apollyon. Uh, CERN, Switzerland, as I've told you before, the Large Hadron Collider, LHC, as it's referred to, 17 miles long in circumference and 300 feet deep underneath the surface of the ground. They fired it up, and every day it begins to yield new things, and it's an ongoing thing now to watch what's happening here at CERN. But it was built in St. Genis Pali in ancient days called a polyacum. 
temple to the god Apollo, where they believed it was a gateway to the underworld. And so it's quite remarkable that they built this thing on that very spot. It's also quite remarkable, and uh, my, my artistry is terrible this morning, but uh, they have a logo. CERN has a logo, and uh, you'll have to see it. This is, this is, a, this is a pitiful uh, uh, reproduction of it. But when you look at it carefully, you will see three sixes. Six, six, six in the CERN logo. Now, folks, of all of the logos that these people could have produced, of all of the variations, infinite variations, why would they choose 666? Six, six, six? <coughs> I believe that the Almighty forces them to mark themselves so that before he comes, he that's letting right now, before he comes, it's a warning to the people, it's coming. And so they are uh, undoubtedly associated with 666. The year 2015, this year that we're living in right now, has been declared the International Year of Light. The International Year of Light. Or another way of saying it is the International Year of Lucifer. Now, how many of you know who Lucifer is? Now, if you've got new Bibles and new dictionaries, you're not sure. But if you've got this Bible that we preach from up here, this King James, you know who Lucifer is. Amen. It's the devil. So I've listened to some, and this is what I heard personally on a video. This is one of the physicists, one of the scientists connected with CERN. These are his very words. Quote, and so the intention is marvelous. Only this physics, which no one knows yet, in, in this realm also contains danger. And I am a little concerned about the dangers that are not yet. And then he stops. How should I say addressed so far? And then he stops. In plainer words, not only is Mr. Hawking warning people that there is a definite danger in dealing with this thing because... Uh, Stephen Hawking says that it could destroy the universe. Their search for the Higgs boson or the God particle, and it could possibly destroy the universe. And also, uh, Mr. deGrasse Tyson uh, essentially believes the same thing, that if you wanted to create, to paraphrase him, if you wanted to create a bomb, uh, they are in the process of doing that because... Here's what's coming from these physicists. These are smart men. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to give you my analogy of it. These are, this is what they're saying. This is what Hawking is saying and the rest of them. These are brilliant men, and they are on the cutting edge of technology and science. And that no doubt a lot of the things that they're going to discover here at CERN will be, no doubt benefit mankind. But there is that possibility that they could cross a line and open up something that would create a chain reaction that could literally destroy the universe. Now that's my analogy of what's going on with CERN. Listen to this. The director of CERN has given interviews to the British press in which he admits that is what they are trying, he admits that what they're trying to do is to open a door. They want to open the door to another dimension now listen carefully. He said when we open the door, something might come through it into our reality or we might send something through it into their reality. Now this is coming from the director of CERN. That should cause anybody to be alarmed because it's uh, they're, they're messing with something that would... Uh, has the potential to do far more than they ever imagined. Now, I'm going to give you the Wikipedia definition of dark matter. And it shows, it gives a graphic here of a, uh, of a, uh, of a uh, star cluster, a galaxy cluster. It says, dark matter is invisible. 
based on the effect of gravitational lensing, <coughs> a ring of dark matter has been detected in this image of a galaxy cluster, and it names it, and has been represented in blue. Now, I know it's too small. You can't see it. But if you want to come by after the service this morning and look at this dark around here. Now, it depends on who you're reading, but it says dark matter is a hypothetical kind of matter that cannot be seen with telescopes, but accounts for most of the matter in the universe. The existence and properties of dark matter are inferred from its gravitational effects on visible matter, radiation, and the large-scale structure of the universe. It has not been detected directly, making it one of the greatest mysteries in modern astrophysics, but they certainly believe it exists. So what is dark matter? Dark matter is this, uh, is this, uh, is this matter that uh, hypothetical right now, they say, but, they, but you've got the graphic here. It is a matter that is, uh, that is uh, everywhere, but it can't be measured like you can measure real matter because this is made up of matter right here, physical structure. Now, I'm not going to try to get a lot of real technical this morning because that's not going to do anything. First place that a lot of this stuff I don't understand, so I look like a fool trying to explain something that I don't fully understand myself. Uh, I've only had now about two weeks uh, reading this, listening to this, uh, watching videos. I've spent I don't know how many hours, uh, I, probably uh, anywhere from six, seven, eight hours immersed in this stuff, watching videos, listening, comparing notes to see what's going on. But I'm going to throw some things out there for you this morning. These are terms I want you to put in the back of your mind because we'll deal with them later. Singularity. So what's that talking about? That's talking about finding a particle, reducing it to its smaller size, then smaller, then smaller, then smaller, then smaller, then smaller, then smaller, then smaller until you have reduced it to its smallest size. And by doing that, you find it in its initial state. The point of the Hadron Collider is to collide particles so that they can reduce them, break them apart, and go down, 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 down. And uh, so that's singularity. Antimatter, we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Dark matter. CERN is the device that will allow humanity to view particles in their initial state, they pray. 1955, antimatter was first produced. 1955. So it's been around for some time. One gram of antimatter, one gram of antimatter is the equivalent of four Hiroshima atomic bombs. One gram. And it took, I don't know how many pounds, you can look it up, of atomic material that was exploded at Hiroshima that made up a little boy. And then what was the other one, the, the bomb? Uh, what? Fat man, yeah, little boy and fat man, these two bombs. One dropped Hiroshima, the next one at Nagasaki a few days later, August, what was it, August the 6th, 1945, somewhere in there, they dropped the first one. Anyway, uh, a gram compared to pounds of antimatter, they are now at CERN in the process of being able to extract pounds of antimatter as opposed to grams. Antimatter is very, very, very unpredictable, and it must be contained. So keep that in mind. It must be contained. They, it's very expensive, and it is very high-tech to be able to contain antimatter. If antimatter is allowed to go into a move about in a volatile state or whatever, it can produce an earthquake. Imagine one gram, four Hiroshima bombs, what would one pound do? It could produce an earthquake. Just the other day, I viewed something that just blew my mind, literally. You know the earthquake in Nepal, don't you? You know what's happened. Thousands of people have died. There in the center of the city was a huge monument to Shiva. You know who Shiva is. Shiva is the god of destruction, the cosmic dance inside the circle. We've talked about that before. Shiva, Vishnu, and Brahma are the three Trini the Trinitarian gods of Hinduism. But don't forget now, don't get messed up. Hindus have millions of gods, but these three work in unison together. Brahma creates, uh, Shiva destroys, Vishnu uh, uh, preserves, and the point is that 
uh, Shiva destroys so it can be recreated by Brahma, and then Vishnu preserves it. So therefore, they have a circle of, of Shiva dancing this cosmic dance inside this. Well, guess what? When this earthquake hit Nepal, it destroyed the temple of Shiva. I thought to myself, our soul. Maybe the Almighty is trying to say something to some of these people. It literally destroyed the temple of Shiva. In plainer words, he wanted them to understand who the real power was, who could destroy the destroyer. And there's only one Almighty God. And you ought to be so thankful to God because I look at these poor people over there, over there, so blinded and so ignorant <clears throat> in their superstition and their religion, walking in total darkness. They don't have a clue who they are and where they came from. And here you have the light blazing in your face like you wouldn't believe. You've got the Word of God. You've got the, you've got the living God and the light of the Scripture blazing in your face. And yet Americans this morning go nonchalantly about their business. The last thing on the mind of most Americans today is their soul. They're headed everywhere in the world. A lot of them are going to get drunk today. They couldn't care less about what I'm talking about. They wouldn't spend five seconds listening to me. It's because their life is here. This is all they know or ever will know in the flesh. But anyway, antimatter cannot be controlled, it must be contained. And if a device fails, and they try to make them fail safe, but if a device fails that is containing antimatter, all kinds of things can happen. Antimatter can be weaponized. <coughs> that is a scary thought. What do you mean weaponized? To weaponize it would be what would be done by a state a state who wants to have uh, ultimate power over another state. In other words, Russia or China or, uh, you know, America or Great Britain who wants to have this kind of power in their hands. And so uh, it, can be, uh, it can be weaponized. Higgs boson that you hear so much talk about, and I'll explain it the way I understand it, and this is the way it was said to me. Higgs boson, the field, they call it the God particle. This was discovered... And Higgs got a, 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 a uh, what do you call it, that, uh, that thing they, gave out, they give out that's meaningless after they gave Obama one? Uh, the, uh, the what? The Nobel Prize. It means nothing now because they gave one to Obama. <laughs> for, I'm serious. They gave him a peace prize, the peace, Nobel for peace. But in any event, this man got it for physics, for science, and uh, uh, Higgs did. Uh, it, it, the Higgs boson field is what is found where matter is not. All right, now just, I know. <laughs> you have, you've got, you've got science speak. <laughs> so just put that in your mind. With Higgs boson, they can alter the appearance of the world as we know it. There has been connected with these people a group for a long time now that has studied the paranormal, the paranormal. The Greek preposition para means to go alongside of. In other words, alongside of the normal. Uh, you have the normal, the paranormal. You know, when a ghost, if a ghost showed up in here today and you, and you had some apparition walk down the aisle, I'd say most people would be upset. <laughs> what you don't realize is that this house is full of spirits right now. But you just happen to be in a body. So it doesn't bother people. It's when the spirit is outside the body, people get upset. You see what I mean? And they're everywhere. And if you're a Bible believer, you believe the Word of God, it doesn't bother you because you know the Holy Ghost is in you and you have nothing to fear from them. There's a wall. and I'll talk about that in a minute. It's quite a remarkable thing that I just discovered this past few days. But in any event, they have, they have discovered by scientific methodology a paranormal activity. And antimatter is associated with the paranormal. Uh, in plainer words, every time that they are working with antimatter, it seems like this paranormal uh, uh, part shows up, and this antimatter can be absorbed. So I want you to think about that because I'm leading you into something this morning with this. Demonic activity is attracted to antimatter. Demonic activity. Now, of course, this this is not this is not this is not a CERN physicist calling it demonic activity. 
They would call it paranormal activity. They would say that it's, it may very well be, uh, it may be, it may be a connection between us and the aliens or to them, it's all up here. It's some alien. Remember, when I use terminology like demonic, I'm not talking, they don't use that terminology. To, to believe that there is a demon is to say, well, there's a spirit world. And then this old Bible must be true. And so they're not going to use that kind of terminology. That throws everything out of kilter for them. But the antimatter can be absorbed, and demonic activity is attracted to antimatter. And it's going to allow, CERN will allow humanity to produce pounds of antimatter. Before it took a long time. But now because of, the, because of the advancement in technology, CERN is going to allow them to produce pounds of antimatter. Antimatter is the unseen portion of dark matter. Now that is controversial, what I just said to you. But from what I can get from everybody I've been listening to, antimatter is the unseen portion portion of dark matter and dark matter is everywhere they say what i've read on uh on the internet wikipedia and some of these other that there is more dark matter than there is physical matter like this right here so antimatter is the unseen portion of dark matter when god made this thing he gave balance to everything everything is balanced there's a balance to it when men step in and throw off that balance, that's when trouble starts. There is a balance. In plain words, if you have the Holy Spirit in you, then you have within you already a power that comes up against this dark matter that's everywhere, everywhere in the universe as we understand it. If you don't have the Holy Spirit living within you, then you have dark matter in you, and that dark matter in you can react with other dark matter. Put that down in your mind. That's important to understand. That's a concept that I'll build on here in a moment to show you how things are developing. Dark matter is in everything. And if you're unsaved today, it's in you. Like these two men who shot these two police officers to death in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, last night. They shot him to death. How many of you knew that? Two police officers were murdered last night in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Why? Because there is a mindset that's moving through the certain population in America that believes it's open season on police officers. They just shot a young man to death in, in, in New York City the other day. Shot him right in the face. They just had his funeral. I cannot remember a time in my lifetime when police have been under the gun like they are now. Can you not see how that when a certain spirit begins to move in people, that it begins to bring stuff out of people? That's dark matter. That's what we're talking about. This stuff is pulling stuff from others. There's a reaction going on. And so now they think it's open season on the police. If you didn't have, you got some of these, you got some people in the country that say, take the guns away from the police. What would you do? If, 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 if the killers, the murderers, the thieves, the rapists, and the robbers knew that nobody in this house could have a gun and no cops would be around with guns, they'd walk right in here when you took up your offering, put a gun to your head, and say, let me have a dime you've got, and that'd be, that is the real world, folks. That's the real world. And if you don't believe that, you've got a problem up here. You really do. That's the real world. They broke into this church five times in a row. Five times in just a short period of time till we finally got a burglar alarm put in here. That's America in 2015. That's the way it is. That's the real world. But the point is this. Something is being pulled out of these people. Something is communicating to them. And I wonder sometimes if this, if, if it's already, if it's not the beginning here because CERN when it starts up, is going to begin to open the door, just like this man said, this, this director at CERN, he says, we want to open a door, and we want to see what comes through that door, or we may be able to push something through that door ourselves. So let's see. Uh, it has a specific type of an energy signature. Antimatter has an energy signature. 
What does that mean? That means that it can be identified and resides in a certain location, an energy signature. It is tied to every life form on earth, everything. Any life form in the presence of antimatter begins to change. Every person has good and bad energy. Let me say that another way. Every person, every one of us, has good and bad in us. This is why the apostle says, I bring my mind and take it into captivity. I take every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. I bring this mind. Why? Because if you think on the wrong things, you begin to open up your mind because your mind is not born again. Your mind is the clearing house that connects either with the spirit of the living God or with the soulish devil, with the soulish body. And so the mind must be renewed. You've got to control what you think. You've got to control what you put into your mind. If you feed the wrong garbage into your mind, it's going to appeal to that fallen nature, the old man. And it's going to begin to release in your body all of this death, all of this stuff. And, and, and the biggest thing that it releases that's the most destructive to you is unbelief. Unbelief. It is an enemy of faith. And whereas on the other hand, that if you take Scripture into your heart, you pray, you receive the Spirit of the living God by faith, it builds your faith. Builds your faith. So that is a fact. Regardless, I, don't have, I don't need a, a, a physicist to tell me that. I believe my Bible. And I know there is a real battle going on in, this, in, the, uh, in, in, in every one of us, in our mind. So uh, any life form, every person has good and bad. Uh, they have found that paranormal activity exists. They found that. Well, I'm glad they did. <laughs> now, how many of you that believe your Bible know it did? Did you know the church I got saved into? They didn't even believe in demons. Isn't that sad? And I was so green and young, didn't know anything. But I hadn't read my Bible long before I thought, well, if, if demons are not real, what's wrong with Christ when he's casting them out of people? Make sense of that. I mean, is, that a, <laughs> is he just a lunatic? I got this from one of them. He was appeasing their, uh, he was trying to uh, go along with their, with their, with their, with their prejudices and with their, uh, with their uh, fears and, and with their ignorance. And he was trying to lead them along and lead them into the light and blah, 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 blah. I thought to myself, anything but believe the Bible. Right. Folks, demons are real and some of you may have an encounter with them before the day's over. Right. One may have followed you in, maybe sitting right next to you. Not your wife. Not your husband. <laughs> but one of them may be sitting right next to you. Amen. Demons are real. There's not a demon under a rock. I'm not, you know, and all that. I'm not fixated with demons. But they are real. They are real. So, uh, uh, <laughs> every person is going to have to deal with this. A person's thoughts will determine which energy they draw from, which is very true. Dark matter is tied to dark matter. Let me explain that to you. This is what's important about this. Dark matter is not controlled the way this would be. This has to have a direct connection in order for this to move. I have to touch it. But dark matter could be right here. And something happened in Chicago, Illinois, or San Francisco, or Tokyo, and affect what's going on right here. It's not bound by time and space as we understand it. Let's say space as we understand it. Dark matter uh, has, a, has, a, has, a, has a, an effect they still don't understand, but they know that it can affect distance, a vast distance away. It can affect another uh, place of dark matter. That's important to understand that. Now listen carefully. People can produce dark matter. Dark matter can cause you to go berserk. Nearly everybody can be possessed with dark matter. So what could happen at CERN? Dark matter causes other pieces of matter to react. In plainer words, what's happening at CERN, Switzerland could be causing something to happen in Nepal. Amen. You know what I mean? Thousands of miles away. 
Now listen carefully to the last part of this. If you don't get anything else from what I'm saying, please listen to this. CERN will produce dark matter. This will react with the dark matter in people. People will have dreams, violent reaction, all kinds of unknown reaction right now. It's unknown to them at exactly what can happen to people. It is being weaponized. Can you imagine if a state had this and they could put it into a population of people that could drive them insane, they could drive them crazy? Most most states that go to war don't really want to blow up all of the oil reserves and, and, the, and, and the valuable equipment. They would like to just blow up the people so that then when they go in and occupy the country, they've got all of these valuable things there, you see. That makes sense, doesn't it? Though if you can drive the people insane, then you can keep the stuff. That's what's going on at CERN. Yes, sir. I know we've heard about the neutron bomb. Yes, sir. That's all right. Now, here's the problem. Here's where they are right now. You've got dark matter, all right? Dark matter. But they have discovered that there's a wall, a wall that separates, that holds back the dark matter from being able to just enter at will just with, with nothing into the realm that we live in right now. There's a wall. There's a wall there. They just, they, and what they're trying to do now is to, they know, they know some of the particles that the wall's made of. They're trying to find the key to be able to open that wall. And when they open that wall, then they can move into that world, pull the dark matter out at will, and do as they please with it. But there's a wall. It's called a veil. And they wouldn't tell you this, but Christians especially have a wall and a veil. Yes, sir. You have a wall around you. You can't see it with a physical eye, but it is a real wall. And that wall is found in 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2. He that letteth will let. He's hindering. Now, if you read in Colossians 1, it says he upholds all things by the word of his power. He upholds them. The Lord Jesus is the glue, the gluon that holds it all together. In plainer words, I don't care how, I don't care how small, 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 small they get to singularity. I don't know if they'll ever find it like that. But the bottom line is, it is a spirit that holds it together and not a physical property. You know what I'm saying? If the Lord Jesus Christ was not holding all of this together, then it would just literally explode. It's amazing when you think about it. When you think about the potential that's out there, what's going on right now, I'm talking about it, and what little we understand about our known universe, about where we live, what we live in. <laughs> They're trying to find out what holds it all together. That's what this is about. That's what CERN is about. They want to go back to the state to where, as I mentioned to you before in the previous message, they want to go back to it where it's not in its hardened state, it's in its liquid state. They want to go back to the point to where it all started. This is why the collision, to find what shows up. And I, I listened to one physicist this morning. He said, now we found that some of these things will last from 10 to 15 seconds. When we see this explosion take place, this collision take place, he says we can observe it for about 10 to 15 seconds, then it disappears. And see, that's, what them got, that's what's got them intrigued because they're looking at something that appears and then disappears. It's there and then it's gone. In other words, it verges on, on, on the line between the physical and the spiritual. They're, they get into an area that is just not 
plain and simple, black and white. It doesn't fit what's called the standard model. I didn't know anything about standard model two weeks ago, but I know what that is now. The standard model is what the physicist uses to judge everything in creation, as they understand it. There's a certain model, and there's one big catch to the standard model. And you know what that is? They still can't figure gravity. They can, there's, no, there's, no, there's, no, there's no physics for gravity, yet gravity's real. Jump up in the air, you're coming back down, right? But what's doing that? I mean, if the Lord Jesus just decided to stop holding everything together, pew, I'd go right up through the ceiling, right? What's holding you on this earth? Gravity. So what if he removes the gravity? We shall be caught up together with him in the clouds <laughs> to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. All he's got to do is, we're gone, but the rest of them stay. The servants of God sealed in their forehead. So when I saw that about the wall and the veil, I jumped up and I shouted. I did. I walked around in the house and I said, Glory to God, hallelujah. Finally, I see something right here. This is, this is, this, this is it. This is it. And they're seeing it scientifically that there's a wall, a veil that separates, that's holding it back. <laughs> that's what it is. It's holding it back. So, you know, if you ever have the opportunity to tell someone, you can. You can say, well, it's that crowd at CERN have, They've found the wall that it talks about in 2 Thessalonians 2. He that letteth will let. But here's the problem. This black, this, this dark energy, this dark energy uh, will have a psychological effect on people. And when it starts, people are going to react in ways that, that they cannot imagine and the last thing the physicist, not the physicist, but this, the one who, d who did the survey on this said, darkness is about to surface that has never been imagined. Now, you know what came to my mind when I heard that? It keeps coming to my mind. In the day when the flood came, they knew not. They knew not. They knew not. They're not worried about that. They're not thinking about that. They don't want to hear about that. They're bored with that. And what I just gave you this morning, if you're a Christian, it ought to excite you. And they're working right now over there. That stuff's flying. They say, it, they say they've got it now almost to the speed of light. And uh, they may even, may, they may break that barrier. I read a thing here a few months back. It blew my mind when I read it. It said that now... They are controlling the speed of light. I thought to myself, now you kidding. That, that's some heavy duty stuff. Controlling the speed of light. My, yes sir. Uh-huh. Eleven thousand times in one second. At the speed of light, almost. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. You, you, you'd wonder how long it would take it traveling at the speed of light to go seventeen miles, eighteen miles. Yes, ma'am. Yes. That's going to be a different thing altogether. All of this stuff that's going on. People are seeing ghosts. They're seeing apparitions. People are losing their mind. All kinds of stuff. And then not, that's not even to mention the earthquakes. But you've got to be careful with earthquakes. We've had earthquakes before. You can't, you know, you can't say because you've had an earthquake it's connected to CERN. But I'll tell you one thing, buddy. When that, when that destroyed that temple of Shiva over there in Nepal, I thought to myself, that's something. Yes, sir. Well, scientists. Well, science, you know, we had the plane that shot down there in Ukraine. It was full of scientists. Yeah, I would, uh, I would recommend Steve Quayle, 
Q-U-A-Y-L-E, Steve Quayle website. He has a whole section devoted to uh, dead scientists that our brother's talking about. Uh, scientists that have died mysteriously and makes you wonder, you know. It's just like the old deal with Pharaoh when they built, their, when they built the tomb down there at Pharaoh. They killed all the people that built it, right? So nobody would know where it was. Travel it. Yeah. By magnets. What do you think, folks? <laughs> let me let me let me ask you. Yes, sir. Thank God I'm saved. But ask you. I want to ask you a question. Does that affect your thinking now? You're going to walk out of here thinking about this, aren't you? You're going to walk out of here thinking about dark matter, antimatter, singularity. And we haven't even talked about interdimensional travel. We haven't talked about stargates. We haven't talked about any of that stuff. You know, that's just, that's, that's in the future. But just the dark matter busting loose all of a sudden. In other words, let's just put it two and two together. If the Lord removes that letting will let, he pulls it back, all of a sudden the floodgates open, all of this dark matter comes out and begins to affect people. They begin to react with it. Couldn't, couldn't you see how that would be connected with, with, for this reason, God will send them a strong delusion? You see the connection? There is a delusion coming, folks, and when it comes, they're not going to know they're deluded. They're not going to know they're deceived. They're going to believe that where they are is in the right, and they're going to worship the Antichrist take his mark. And when, I want you to see the logo. Get on the internet, Google it, just type CERN in. You'll pull up the page and look at the logo. Six, six, six. Ask yourself the question, why of all the stuff they had to use that logo? All right, well, we've run out of time. We'll pick it up again next week. If people tell you that I've gone off the deep end and I'm ready for the loony farm, you can tell them, just tell them, well, at least he's happy, amen. <laughs> oh, now, let me say, give you this, this, this disclaimer. This is, a, this, is a, this is a theoretical position, a situation. This is a possibility, all right? I have to say that. I don't know that it's going to happen like I said it to you this morning, but all of these things need to be dealt with. They are in reality. I gave you, I gave you a lot of reality, but then I gave you, the, gave, you, gave you some hypothesis with it. So keep that in mind. Who knows? And I sure don't know the day or the hour when the Lord's coming, but I know he's coming. Amen. No doubt in my mind. The Lord's coming. Exactly. Exactly. All right, Brother Valens, will you dismiss us, please?
what I pray. Bring conviction to this house today, Lord. For those people who think they're saved and don't know for sure if they're saved, 